What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. It's DJ Rick Webb and I got a special guest here. We're gonna be doing a Q&A session with the man himself, Joe Bunn. Woo! Let's go. Right now we're here in uh, Bun HQ. We're sitting in the little lounge meeting space. The meeting room. Meeting room. room. I understand why clients like it in here. This is a nice couch. Right? Alright, so these questions were submitted on my Instagram. My Instagram's right here and Joe's right there. Follow Joe, follow me if you're not already doing so. So, uh, first question uh -huh. we have here is what is the best way to get rid of old equipment to maximize your profits when getting rid of it? That's a great question and my old answer would have been eBay. Uh, my new answer is Facebook Marketplace. Facebook Marketplace. Yeah, Facebook Marketplace. Uh, Craigslist seems a little, it, I, it did work for a while, but it became kind of a sketchy environment. Mm -hmm. uh, but Facebook Marketplace seems to be the most luck I'm having lately. And the most important thing about that is you don't have to ship it. Now, I don't know if you guys have shipped anything recently, but shipping prices are out of control. I actually just sold probably about six months ago my old BMS 4.1. Little controller had its own little flight case. The shipping on that was $150. Not so even far. far. It was yeah. like two states over. Yeah, it's crazy, man. Shipping is out of control. So Facebook Marketplace. What is the the lowest budget speaker that you would still consider as a good speaker. If a new DJ came up to you and was like, hey, I'm looking for some budget speakers, don't really have much money, what would you tell them to buy? I think there's certain, God, I don't even want to say this. You know, there's just certain brands that I, I would probably stay away from. There's definitely, you can, um, you can say them. I have my brands I'd stay away from. Maybe Alto. I would stay away from Alpha. It has never done very good by me. Although some Behringer stuff has worked for me, I would not be a bigger conspiracy. Okay. I have a whole video. It's like the most controversial <laughs> video out there. It's the top five best beginner DJ speakers, and I have to tell you which ones to buy and which ones not. Oh wow. Okay. So this is probably why this question is right. Coming. Right. Th those are the ones I would steer clear of. Yes, JBL has a line array. And JBL has a, what's an entry JBL? E Eon. It's the Eon. The Eon. Eon right. series. So I had the very first powered speaker that ever came out, I think, in the United States at least, was the JBL Eon. Eon. The gray one. It was like the G1. G1. G1 or something like that. And, I, and, I, and they were terrible. The G2 was much better. It was black. Mm -hmm. It looked the exact same. It was and black. It had that weird kind of egg-shaped back yeah. on it. Uh, it's black. I still see DJs using them around now. Yeah. They were loud as hell and uh, they were good. So my point is, I still think that consumers um, and, and people at events and weddings know brands like JBL, know brands like EV, Yamaha, even Mackie. So, you know, I, I would stick within the, you know, the, the hardcore brand lines, even if you had to get an entry level speaker. Yeah, absolutely. Stick with name brands that have reputation. Next question here is, how do you go about from getting contacted about giving pricing to closing? This is a very vague question, but I guess the better question is, what will be the process for a client that somehow inquiries for you, they, they give you an inquiry or mm -hmm. they send you a text or an email mm -hmm. and they want to know pricing? What would be the stages they would go through? Basically, we respond to all of those manually. We don't use the CRM. So if somebody inquires, either myself or Randy, uh, responds, you know, within the same day, unless it's on the weekend, of course. You know, we kind of have a, a, a template, you know, that we copy and paste, but we always customize that email to mention the venue. So if they said, we're getting married at Prestonwood Country Club next October, we'd say, oh, we love playing at Prestonwood Country Club. We're on their preferred vendors list. You're going to look gorgeous coming down that staircase, you know, for your formal hey. introduction. Like, so, so that they know that it's not a robot talking to them. Yeah. And once that inquiry comes in, they go into the CRM, which we, we currently use DJ Event Planner, so that they can be followed up with in case mm -hmm. they kind of go ghost. But if they don't go ghost, um, and in that initial email, we will actually give them pricing. So we have an a la carte option, or we have package options. Therefore, if they respond back to the last question that is on that email, which says, can we have a DJ contact you for a consultation? If they say yes, to me, that is the hottest, most pre-qualified lead you can have. Because again, they've already seen the pricing. Yep. They know that it's you know X thousand dollars and that that's probably within their wheelhouse. Now, do we get a ton of people saying it's way out of our price range? Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's just not our client in the first place. So once they say yes, please have a DJ contact us. We look at the available DJs, starting with the senior most DJs that have been here the longest. We send them a email that says, uh, hot lead is the subject line. It says, here is the lead. It's Susie Smith, October 10th, Umstead uh, Hotel, 
get on this quick. The DJ then becomes responsible for that lead, you know, to contact them, yep, and say, you know, hey Susie, my name is Rick, I work for Bun DJ Company, and um, you know, they passed your information over to me, I'd love to meet with you about your October 10th wedding, super excited. At that point, Rick and Susie start talking, and then the next thing you know, they've set up a meeting here, usually in the evenings, usually weekday nights, after people have gotten off work, my DJs all mostly have full-time jobs as well, and they come here, they sit down on the couch, the couple does. You know, there's a TV right over there. Mm -hmm. uh, the DJ sits right across from them and kind of streams their presentation that we do a, a kind of a keynote or PowerPoint presentation. Yep. And we kind of run through some slides about the history of the company, about how to use the online planning tools. And next thing you know, they're booking a show. I'm making it sound easy, but it's just a really well done system at this yeah. point. It works for us. So I wanted to comment on, he said about mentioning the venue. Now this is something, as a new person to this area, I stray very far from even mentioning the venue if I have never been there. Because mm -hmm. the number one question you get asked if you mention their venue is, mm -hmm. are you familiar with this venue? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know why or what it is, but mm -hmm. clients love to know that you've worked at their venue before. Mm -hmm. And if you haven't, and you just opened up the whole new question on, right. have you been at their venue? And then you're like, no, but I'd love to. And then it's just like you just kind of you, you backed yourself you, into you a got, corner. Yeah, you backed yourself down on their like looking at list. For me, I mentioned something more personal on like the availability or something about our company. Something that doesn't seem robotic, but um, that's something. Being a new person that doesn't have a lot of venues under our repertoire, um, if we have been that venue, we won't even talk about the venue. Mm. And just yeah. to stay away from it. Yeah. A good point on the venues as well. If you're new to the area like me, and this is something I've recently started doing when I have available days to go do it, is go tour the venues. Venues are more than happy to have a vendor come visit their venue. Absolutely. Absolutely. But that's something you can mention is I've I've worked with so and so over there, I went and visited, blah blah blah. And then that kind of works in the same sort of way as I'm familiar, I've worked there before. Yeah. How do you stay up to date on new music? Because yeah. music's coming out literally every hour at this point in yeah. today's day and age. So there's a bunch of different ways that I do that. Um, I think one of the, the, the things that I've become uh, so habitual about is every Friday morning when I get up, uh, before I even leave my driveway, I pull up that new Music Friday on Spotify yeah, playlist. Yeah. I always pull that one up and there's the other one that I like is called Release Radar. From that point forward, that's all new stuff. I always look at the billboard.com Hot 100. I still look at iTunes Hot 100 or Top 100. And then of course, as most people know, like one of, one of my favorite record pools is BPM Supreme. So I'll look at their top download section. Really it's multiple channels. I'm also really fortunate in that Randy Bennett, who works for me, has been here for 16, 17 years. And honestly, man, even though he's 52 years old, he is so dialed into what is, is good. Yeah. I mean, I don't care if I say, I got a problem to do, Randy. And even though he's 40 years older than these kids, mm -hmm. he's like, I got you, bro. And he'll send me an Excel spreadsheet of exactly what I need to get through that problem. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. This one's a really good question on business in terms of being a actual legal DJ business. So. Should you have a lawyer create your contract template or can you do it yourself? Now, I'm a big lawyer fan, man. You know, you, <laughs> I'm, I'm with you there. I, I will say that uh, I had a friend of mine that is a lawyer at a top tech firm in town look at my DJ contract, change it, and I did share that under the essential documents in the DJ's vault. However, you will notice that at the very top of it, she puts a disclaimer on it. like. It depends on where you are. What it state your city? Right. Exactly. So, you know, you can look at that as a as a basis, but please, like, just pay the hundred, two hundred dollars. Do a consultation with a lawyer; they will help you out tremendously. And we'll talk about the DJ's vault here at the end of the video as well. I just threw a shameless plug in there for you. What is the best DJ equipment for DJ? But really, what they're asking is, if you had the choice mm -hmm. of these two consoles to DJ on, mm -hmm. would you choose the Pioneer DDJ SZ2 mm -hmm. or CDJ 2000 Nexus 2s with a Pioneer 900? Mm -hmm. um, if I had the choice, I'd still go with the controller, just for being a, as a mobile DJ, somebody that has to hump this gear around, and even that controller to me is is way too big for me as a mobile. Mm -hmm. Like I'm a I'm I'm I love got my eyes set on want to buy the one thousand one thousand. Yeah, I mean I'm an SX three guy. 
I have an SX2 at my house. I have an SX1 as the backup. So I'm a huge Pioneer fan ever since day one. Um, you know, I like the Roland 707 for a super small rig, but if I had to choose between those two, I'm still going with the controller. And the, the 1000 is going to be hot soon. Yeah. If you guys don't know, the 1000, literally what it is is they took an SZ and they made it the size of an SX2 yep. or an but SX3. Still got the big jog wheels. But it still has the jog wheels and they upgrade them to the CDJ jog wheels, which Ooh. is, if you've never actually played yeah. around with CDJs, yeah. it's saucy. It is. <laughs> so Joe, this next question kind of revolves around, we've been talking all day a little bit about millennials, Gen Z, especially when we were doing some of the work for the Vault. Mm -hmm. They see right through the bullshit of sales pitches, the automated emails, they see right through it. So. Mm -hmm. The question is, how do you market to people? How do you market to them? And how do you follow up with them without seeming annoying? I mean, I think that with anything, you know, when you start to run a company of this size, you know, and we run just out of the Raleigh office, 15 DJs, there has to be some degree of automation. And I think that even Gen Z, a millennial, you know, knows that CRMs exist, follow up exists, things like that. So. You know, I'll, I'll say this, as we spoke about in an earlier question, I do love the fact that we customize that first response. We start that conversation. If they do ghost, that's when the automation kind of takes place. But again, they're super short and salesy. I mean, non-salesy. They don't say, hey, you know, Susie, I know you inquired three days ago, but you better contact us back fast because we're booking up October 10th like crazy and you're going to miss out on this. Like. We never like do that like hardcore sales tactic or, you know, let me go get my manager and see if I can do a better deal or the, any of the used car tactics. We just don't do that because I think that people, they don't, I hate it. I hate it when people try and sell me hard. Mm -hmm. Even when I sit here, you know, and if there was a couple sitting where the, the camera is right now and I got to the end of this presentation, you know, I basically just say, can I send you guys a contract for your wedding date? I'd love to work for you. You know, there's not some kind of super hardcore pitch or anything. And I'll be honest with you, probably uh, we book 95% of the people that walk through this door, right? But I bet that night, still probably 25% leave and say, hey, we need to talk about it with our parents yeah. or whatever. I've even had people walk out in the parking lot have a conversation with each other and then walk back in. in. Yeah, and say, look, we just needed that minute yeah. by ourselves. So, you know, again, we don't have this hardcore, you know, um, scare tactic or sales pitch at the end. We just simply say, we'd love to work for you. And I, that's something I actually had to teach myself being taken on the role of owning my own company back yeah. in 2018. The One of the scariest things ever when you first start out is getting to that pricing conversation. Yeah walking through talking about what we do and how we do it and stuff like that that's so easy once you get to that so let's talk pricing yeah that's the scariest thing ever sure. i know for starting out djs and stuff like that still that's is scary it's still, it's still is. scary yeah because yeah. you don't know what they're gonna if they, if they start talking like well like any but it, it gets it's something we don't want to talk it's uncomfortable yeah it's that's very right. uncomfortable talking about money because that's what they're paying you it's very uncomfortable right and it is a lot of money like if you it think is, about it, yeah. like you know with with a package like you know myself or Rick puts together, it's I mean, a good you're down about, payment on a car. Absolutely, it's twenty five hundred, three thousand dollars all day to go mm -hmm. out on a Saturday and do a wedding. I guarantee yeah. it. So it's a lot of money. But I like what you say. You just it's talk. Can I follow up with you? Yeah. And that's something I do too. I'm never trying to book them on the spot. Can I send you a proposal afterwards, or or you say contract, right? Yeah. Can I send you a contract? Yeah. And you let them just discuss it on their own. Yeah. No pressure. You don't want pressure. Sometimes they're not the decision maker, guys. You know, Very they, much so. they just can't make that decision without leaving here with the price tag and going back to whoever's paying for the wedding. It doesn't matter how salesy you are, they just can't make the decision until they take it back to their parents. All right, guys, so that's literally all the questions we had. I just posted this not too long ago, so we didn't really get too many people to send a question in. If you guys send in a question later, I'm sorry we didn't get to it. Again, Instagram links are right there. I, I did want to wrap it up because I uh, couldn't go without mentioning it. Joe has an amazing, awesome platform called the DJ's Vault. We've already mentioned it a couple of times now. I have a whole video on my channel explaining what the DJ's Vault is. Is. One thing that I love about it is it's 
it's pretty much ongoing. There's constant updates, new content. We just filmed a bunch of content not too long ago that's going to be up in the, what, the December update? Should be December. The December yeah. update on the DJ's ball. So there's new content coming out all the time, but guys, it literally covers every aspect of basically being a mobile DJ. Uh, so if you guys want to check it out, there's all kinds of content on marketing, how to run a business, music, equipment. You guys love equipment. There's experts from all over the DJ industry, Jason Janai, Brian B., Mike Walter. Mike Walter. Mm -hmm. um, it's just basically taking all of the information that's out there on the internet and putting it in one centralized location, guys. It's really awesome. So if you guys want to check it out, the link is in the description down below. You guys can check it out and see what the DJ's vault is all about. But anyways, guys, that's all for this little Q&A session with the man, Joe Bunn himself. Thank you, guys. You got any last words for everyone? Man, thanks so much. Really, if you guys are mobile DJs and you haven't checked out the DJ's Vault yet, like like we said, the link is right down below. We'd love to get you inside. I think if you check it out for a month and actually uh, digest some of the content, it will really help your business. It's 35 years of me doing this and taking it from my brain and putting it out on the internet for you guys. So, hope you enjoy it. So, like always, if you like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. Give a big thumbs up for Joe. Give it up. Give it up. Also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And like always, guys, my name is DJ Rick Webb. That's Joe Bunn. Keep the record spinning, guys, and we will see you guys next time. Peace.